Making sure a baby gets enough sleep can be one of the biggest obstacles a new parent faces. April's issue of American Baby Magazine has an age-by-age -age guide that will have your baby nodding off in no time. And for more now, we're joined by Jessica Hartshorn, Senior Lifestyle Editor for American Baby. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, the sleep issue is a big one yes. because, and probably if people are watching this show, <laughs> it's <all> impacting them. <laughs> yeah. um, but why is it so crucial for babies to get a, enough sleep? Well, sleep is definitely when they do they're growing right and when they sort of reset and rest is is just vitally important to an, an infant's health now when you have a newborn they're sleeping all the time around the clock the thing is they don't sleep for more than about two hours and then they're not awake for more than about two hours so that first three months is kind of like the wild west it's going to be brutal for you and uh, trying to keep up with this baby who sleep wake sleep wake sleep wake sleep wake what can you do well you, you know you, you kind of train them to sleep in sort of the same place most of the time okay which means you don't want them sometimes falling asleep in the car seat, sometimes the stroller, sometimes your lap, sometimes the crib. Like, start to introduce the idea that mostly you're trying to sleep in the crib or the bassinet or wherever you want them to sleep eventually at night. Is it so they, and, get, uh, they get used to it in the cues? Mm, they associate it with sleep, sure, okay. and, uh, and keeping the room a little dim. I mean, you have to live your life. You're going to have to be out and around with a sleeping baby. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just again, just sort of, in, you know, don't be afraid, even when they're just tiny, tiny, to introducing them, this is where you sleep at night eventually yeah. around three months <laughs> <laughs> what about those um those noisemakers that make white noise i mean i know yeah, i really love them help. they really help um it can just be a fan in the bathroom or you can get an actual white noise machine or something that makes like a heartbeat sound this is the trouble some of our readers find is that they the baby gets so dependent on it that it, for instance if it makes a heartbeat sound for 45 minutes and then it shuts itself off the baby wakes right back up wow. so you really if you're going to do white noise you really have to commit to playing it all night long just an FYI. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also in those first three months when they're waking up, is that because they want to eat and so you're feeding yeah, you're, you're feeding, feeding them, them. exactly. Constantly. And okay. then it's around three months that their sleep sort of organizes so that they're sleeping more at night than during the day. Probably they're taking like three or four naps though. They're still not awake for much more than two or three hours, even in the three to six month range. Okay. It's between about um, six and nine months that they really hit that like typical baby sleep where it's uh, a morning nap and an afternoon nap and then uh, a solid stretch of sleep at night. Okay, so those naps are longer, but how long are we talking now? They're gonna be a couple hours, and the interesting thing to me is that babies are ready for that morning nap just two hours after they wake up. So if they wake up at six in the morning, at eight in the morning, they really could be lay back down in their crib. And you wanna kinda look for those sleep windows, you know? You don't want to wait until the baby is so exhausted that they're falling asleep on your shoulder. Yeah. Like if they start to seem tired or you know that they're ti tired two hours after they wake up, lay them in the crib and let them drift themselves off to sleep, which is sleep training, which is something I was terrible at, I will admit. <laughs> we have all this advice in the magazine from experts about how to sleep train your baby. They all involve some tears, you know, because you're going to lay your baby down awake. The idea is to lay them down awake and they teach themselves how to fall asleep. And they can really do that starting around three months. A lot of women wait till more like six. You can even wait till about nine months. Um, and there are different ways you can stay in there and reassure them as they fall asleep or go in every five minutes and check on them. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you will you will raise a good sleeper. It is actually very a healthy way to teach babies how to sleep. I was a total chicken though, and so I would lay with my kids. Aww. And now my son is five, <laughs> and he still wants me to lay with them at night. So Aww. I'm like the warning, the horrible warning. But uh, <laughs> now what happens as they get a little bit older? So I guess the next group will be uh, 12 to 21 months. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned how important it is to have them sleeping as much as possible. But at right. that point, though, you're they might drop to the morning nap. The, the thing about dropping the morning nap is a one year old is then the afternoon nap becomes longer okay the thing I don't like to see sometimes parents seem to brag like you know he's two and now he doesn't need to nap anymore it's like well he kind of does like it's really healthy and, and sometimes when they nap during the day they actually sleep better at night I think it, it just it you know it is healthy again and, and you, you should encourage your kid to nap through age three really sometimes four and five year olds still need to nap on the weekends it's you know sometimes yeah. I still need to nap on the weekend oh I do it's too I'm, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of it I love it all right Jessica Hartshorn great tips thank you so much thanks